Well, good morning, everybody. It's Douglas Heal coming from Cape Town, and today we're talking to Grant, and Grant is in Scotland. He did tell me the small place where it was, and he said it about five times, and I couldn't quite get it, so I'm just saying Scotland. Good morning, Grant. Good morning. So so, so tell the folks, where, where in Scotland are you from? <laughs> Straven. See, I, 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 I keep hearing different things. So I say Straven, Straven, but it's, sometimes Scotland is just easier. So today we're just checking in with you, and uh, you have put up quite a few stories on 3000stories.com, uh, yep. which I really appreciate, we really appreciate. Um, and it's, it's, it's got a lot of interesting elements to it, because the, the one that really was a big deal for me was your story. And the, the thing that was like really caught me in your story is you said, my story would have ended here, except Doug and Nuno had an interview and there was, and then there was some insight and then something else happened. So just run us through that because, because that's really cool and really important all at the same time. Yeah, I was, when I was watching it, you were talking about when the, like something, when you, when, when you realize something in your own head, it can have an effect on your physiology. But just as you were saying that, I was kind of thinking about what had been happening with me and my thoracic outlet and my arm. And in my story, I'd always said that one of my triggers was my two boys. When they go to here, I had somewhere along the, the, the line thought that the only way to deal with them was to go to here. Um, and at that moment, I kind of realised, you know, I've just handed over all power to them. So when they think I'll poke the angry bear, then they're having a great time. Because they know exactly what the angry bear is going to do, which means you might be big and powerful. Well, it looks that way, but actually you don't have power on what's happening. They do. Because they're in complete control and they're having a great time. So when I was thinking about that, I just all of a sudden felt from my right pec and my right shoulder blade right down my arm went really hot. And then the tension that I've had in my arm has gone. That's so that that's brilliant. And, and 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 the thing is that you know it shouldn't actually sound weird to people, but but really what it is is that your brain integrating and and putting a piece of the puzzle in its right place, and suddenly the puzzle makes sense, and the physiology yeah. goes, Oh, all right, I get the picture now, and something changes. And and you know, that's that's why we say it doesn't matter what your intervention is. And so sometimes your powerful intervention comes when we hit an activation point and we stimulate it this way or we do it that way or it's the someone suddenly understands their pattern better and then they go oh wow oh oh now i get it and then they bring better information and the information helps us but also helps them yeah i mean the only way i could describe when my arm felt before see the, the diagrams that you've got and the, the manuals for the patterns with the wee arrows going up that's exactly how my right arm felt from my hand. It just felt as if everything was doing that. And then at, at that moment, it just went weird. Can't explain it. Don't need to. But, but you see, what, and, 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 but, but what's really important is all of the steps that you had already taken before that. So everything else was set and ready. And it was almost like the body was just going, yeah, you know, we, we just, we're just waiting for him, the right arm, to actually wake up and realize what's going on. The, mi the minute they do, we'll all have a good chuckle. And then we'll let, we'll let him like, operate the right way. He can, he can come back into our group and he can come and belong to this body that we call Grant. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot better. I feel better for it. Um, but yeah, I think that the whole visual field thing for me, I know you mentioned that in the last uh, interview you did with John, that I think had set something in, in motion from there because I felt completely- Well, 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 well let's, let's jump into a bit of history. So the last time you attended a course with me was in Sheffield in February, Yeah, which was my, my last series of workshops where we did London, Sheffield, and then we ran the Parkinson's pilot study. I went home. And then that's where everyone's been ever since home, uh, wondering what the hell's going on. But we brought you up for the visual field. Yeah. And in fact, we had quite a funky interaction with, with another participant where we were, 
<laughs> we were talking about, I believe we were talking about, could they ever find love? Yeah. You know, because these are the, these are the best ways that we um, <laughs> can use. <Yeah. laughs> um, but but the cool part was that you gave me a lift to the airport uh, after the workshop. Yes. So I got to experience firsthand the impact in your new in your world and in your driving. And you know, I'm seriously grateful realizing that I don't know who the hell the driver would have been before, but just. Just do a bit of a recap. So, so first, in your visual field, what 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 was shut down and what needed to wake up? It was anything out with, I would have said about four meters. I was comfortable in the kind of anything that was within four meters. I was okay, but anything out with that, then yeah, I couldn't hold. Um, and then obviously after the, the, you did the, the activation at the point. The, but, 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 but it's, it's, it's the weird thing about visual field, isn't it? It's because, because someone says, what, you can't see beyond four meters. And the answer is no, that's not what we said. What we said is that beyond four meters in front of you and all the way around to the side, all of those stimulus would stress your system out and make it want to collapse. Whereas anything within four meters, almost within reaching distance, and I'm just picturing two young guys running around just outside of dad's reach. <laughs> you know, they, they would know what is, the, what is the zone where the bear can actually catch us. Um, <laughs> and they would just stay out of it, which would antagonize the bear even more. Um, so, so it's, uh, yeah, so then we did the activation. Yeah, and then I can actually, one of the weirdest things was walking about the room afterwards while everybody else was going about visual field and even looking it sounds weird but looking at people's faces just it looked people looked different so yeah. people i've been spending four days with all of it was almost as if i could see more life in their faces yeah um and then yeah driving to the airport the one thing i've noticed was it's, it's okay driving along and, and you can see things and i can see the road signs when if you're driving along and you're saying oh there's a road sign I wonder how many more miles there is to Edinburgh, and you look at it, and that's fine. But what I was realizing was, we obviously didn't know where I was going, so I was looking for cutoffs on the motorway and stuff. And normally, what would happen if I was with my wife, we'd be driving along and looking for a cutoff, don't know where we're going. She would say, Did you, is there? Did you not see the sign? And I was like, Well, no. But what hey, hey woman, I'm driving. Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> You're the navigator. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's not a navigator. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was noticing was looking for road signs, I could see them all. Um, so it just start, you know, even the ones when I'm looking, trying to work out where we're going, then I could all of a sudden see these road signs that I wouldn't actually see them until we were right at them and I'd have to go across. It's, and it's usually a little bit late. So, so, you know, this, this this actually sounds like quite a deep philosophical conversation, actually, with, with if you really realize it or not. So what I heard you say was all the signs were always there. You yep. just weren't able to read them. Yeah. Until you could. Yeah. And, and, and it is quite crazy how the world, you know, like if you, if you think about a space of reaching people of, so you go, okay, so if, as long as we're in within four meters of each other, you and I can connect because I'm in a space where that's my zone, you know? So, so you'd hear people saying, no, no, I, I like working one-on-one, -on -one. Maybe, maybe two people's good, but I don't like bigger, bigger groups. Why? Because <laughs> yeah, bigger I groups are beyond four meters. Uh, stand up in front of the class and speak. Oh, you know, I, I had this idea. I really wanted to, but now that I'm called up, holy shit, are you mad? But what I can think back is I could always stand up in front of a crowd, but I would always be looking at the front. I would always be looking at the, the people right in front of me and ignoring the so the peanut gallery at the back that was booing you and throwing things at you, he was smiling at them because you couldn't see them. <laughs> <laughs> even when I think back to even things like playing football, brilliant at five asides in a contained area. And on an 11 aside park, I was good in a small area. But if I had to look up and you're looking at the whole pitch, all of a sudden you're kind of freezing. I can think back to loads of things now and it all 
Makes sense. Well, well, you see, that's the most important thing because th this this is not like um, you, people often go, oh, wow, that's so cool. You know, you'd found something now. And, no, no, this is the pattern you've had your whole life. And 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 so that that's why you know, stories are so important because stories are, okay, so if we know there was a physiological weakness within the system, I wonder how that played out in how you played football, how you did this, how you did that. And we start to go, actually, the reason I couldn't progress beyond that particular point was actually because of this issue that I didn't know that I didn't know I had because no one had ever considered it was even a possibility. And I think that's what's so cool. So as you start developing your own story around it, it's amazing the difference that it then makes when you're working with other people. Because you also find that now that, now that you understand your stuff a little bit better, it's easier to connect with them because you have your own story. Yeah. Um, the, the, the other thing about it was, <laughs> which just is going to prove you correct, um, you know, I, don't, I don't know if you remember the night before we were sitting at the, the dinner table and uh, it was you, me and Ross and we were talking about um, what you do and going around the world and I said, I don't think I could do that. Um, and what I was meaning was being away from home but what you were thinking at and I said, I'm quite happy with my room at work, which is about four metres long. <laughs> your, your box is four by four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but as soon as you had done the visual field and you'd worked out where it was, you said, your room at work, you're quite happy in there. I wonder what will happen if we see you in a year's time. Um, will you be more out there? Um, I, so I've now got like a couple of taekwondo clubs, a gym, a couple of rugby teams that want me to go and speak to them about be activated and things once everything kind of starts to open up and I'm like looking forward to it. And so, yeah, so it has totally, <laughs> totally changed me. That's very, that's very cool. But uh, you know, it, it's, 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 I have, I have a thing in my head that, um, that always says, if I can see it, I can have it. Yeah. And and, 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 and so that's great. And, you know, there's a whole lot of these different programs where, you know, goal setting and visualization and manifesting where you've got to be able to see it. Yeah. And you wonder how many people can't see it in their mind's eye because they can't see it in their own physiology. You have those, those, those same um, blind spots, weaknesses, zones. You know, if you, if you um, put a plan together, um, I was actually, uh, yesterday, I had quite an amazing conversation with Tim, who's helping with all the social media and all the stuff. And, and he's been doing the journey. So he's been doing all the online learning and integrating and learning from all these interviews. And um, he was talking about, you know, like how he's using activation in a totally different place. Because we've got lot, lots of cool, really cool stuff came out of the conversation yesterday. But in the stock market, and I'm like, I'm just smiling. And I said, well, that's very cool because the stock market is driven by fear and greed. Yeah. And both of those are emotions that put you into fight, flight or freeze. And so what he's doing is before he considers doing anything in his trading, he's activating to put himself in the best possible position so that he's clear in his system on what's actually happening. And he's finding that he's being far more effective in his trading. And you go... Cool. I wonder if I can get a percentage of that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and you go, hang on. So so you know, these ideas, you know, they, they really do apply anywhere. Any any place where you start to notice that your system shuts down, well, it's yeah. going to find a reason for you not to go to those places. And then when it opens up, as your visual field has, suddenly you know, instead of finding an excuse not to go to the rugby club or the taekwondo or whatever, you're actually looking forward to it. Yeah. Because yeah. you know you're going to go into that space and be able to see everyone in the room. Yeah. And have fun with it. And have fun with it. That, that's, that's the cool part. So if I jump back to your stories, so you've, yeah. you've also posted two other stories that have been written by your clients. And... I, I think before I ask you about the stories, it just what, what what is the work that you actually do? What are you trained as? Hey, my background is sports therapy and sports and exercise science. Cool. 
So I, I trained as a sports therapist. Perfect. Um, and 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 you're from Scotland, and 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 the Scottish men are not considered the most, you know, sensitive, feminine, loving, caring, creating spaces for people to bring their crap. But yet I'm reading stories about, uh, and, 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 you know, for me, it's a big thing. It's, I, I, I hear or I read stories of a man bringing an energy that creates a space for his clients to come into and be safe. And therefore, they're able to find their stuff. And it's not the man, look at me. You know, that's the big angry bear. That's not a man. That's just a, a, a crazy mad thing. So, so what, what is happening in your space? Because, you know, your, your clients are telling some quite remarkable stories. And there's a huge reflection in there about what you are bringing to them. Um, I think it's just taking time to, to listen to them, basically. Um, giving them an outlet. It's... Like beforehand, before I did be activated, you had somebody come in and, okay, they've got Achilles tendon off with their sore hip, and, that, and that's where you went. But now yeah. what you're doing is you're asking what's happening with them. And um, people are then, a lot of them are kind of uncomfortable to open up at first, but as you just listen and, you, I don't know, I just have that, able to build a rapport with people now. Um and it's just different to what we were doing before. But I, I can't quite explain it. It just kind of is happening. And, I'm and, and yeah, and, I, and I, 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 think, I think what I like about what you say is it's just happening. It's not like you specifically going out of your way. Come on, you've got to tell me more. You know, when we're trying to force a story out of someone, you, you're actually going to close them up. Whereas I, I find what happens with people is you're working. As you are reflecting to them, oh, look, this is this is what your body's doing. Kind of, hey, what do you think about that? Well, well, and then they're asking better questions. Well, why is my body doing that? Well, it's doing that because of these possible reasons. And then suddenly you give them a way in to recognizing how their body is playing out everything they're doing in their life. So yeah. th this could be someone trying to overcome a disease. This can be someone in pain and dysfunction. This can be a rugby player who isn't performing at the level they want to be performing at. It's all the same thing. And, yeah. and, and until, until we find what it is that's kind of that obstacle in the way of, of our healing, our performing, our expanding, our seeing, well, then you're never going to be able to get beyond it because you don't know what it is. So your job is to help reflect. And you're obviously doing a very good job with that. Thanks. <laughs> And it's just like what I, I used to think I enjoyed what I did uh, working in the, the traditional way of doing sports therapy. Um, but what I've come to realize it was actually just dealing with people that I was, had been enjoying because the job before was repetitive as hell. Do you know, it was the same. All I was really getting in was my name was kind of out and running in triathlon. And that's the oh, it's treatment. So you're treating the same injuries over and over, and people are coming in. And you're, you're get out of school, you've stopped doing your exercises, and oh, yeah, so we're back to the start. And it was just the same stuff all the time. Um, but what I'm now finding is that, yeah, you get people are coming in, especially now, more people are kind of overwhelmed. And as soon as you start that conversation with them um, that, of what's going on in their life, even for like, I, I do consider Scottish people what we are quite we're closed down and don't really want to open up. But all of a sudden, I'm getting these people who, big men, you know, like strong men are coming in and you're, you're getting tears and they're starting to open up about stuff that's going on in their life. Um, so I'm getting that connection that I've always enjoyed, but the work that and the, the results that they're achieving are far more profound. And they're saying that. And one of the best things that they're leaving my room saying now is, wow, I've learned a lot today. And yeah, that's huge. But but, but that's it. We are, we are facilitators and teachers. Yeah. Um, so, but that's what makes it fun for me. Do you know, because you're, you're getting, 
really to know getting to know people, even if it's just for two, three, four sessions, yeah. you actually really do connect with someone and, and, and get to know them. Um, and, and just walk, watching people walk out with a smile on their face. And when and, and you know it, it, it is a it's it, it's such an interesting place because so many people have been running around with their with, with everything so held so tightly. And all of that obviously we know has a, a massive impact on their physiology and what everything that we're seeing. But 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 it, it it's it's kind of the people walk around feeling like frauds, partly because nobody can see them. Why? Because you've got all the shit bound on top. So all people are seeing is the top layers. So as the layers come out, it is almost like we're having that first, you know, that we're, we're the first person that can actually see them. Not always, but it just sounds dramatic, but it, but it actually is as simple as that. You know, I, I remember it, it, it pops up for me. Uh, we did a program in Chicago um, at this huge hospital, huge, geez, ginormous. And there, there, there was a, um, trying to think what this, there was quite a heavy story that went in this, this lady um, needed help after day one, because some, like something had opened up um, that she, you know, we were going to cover on day two, but we didn't want to leave her with day two. And so we did some very simple stuff, but, but she'd carried this, this burden and I might, might get it slightly wrong, but, but I think it was her father died and her mother, as her father died, said, this is your fault. And the sister and the mother kept telling her that the father died or killed himself or whatever because of her. And that's what she carried. Yeah. And, and so she's now a mother that her, her child won't connect with her. The dog hates her, you know. And, and so what, what was amazing, I can't even remember what we did. It was very simple. And, you know, there were a lot of people waiting outside, all with good intent. And, I, and, and when we were done, and it wasn't a massive thing, it was just really profound. And, and, um, and I just said, leave her alone. Don't touch her. Let her go home. Because the first person who deserves to see her fully like this is her husband. Yeah. Who... And, and that was, it was just the coolest thing because her husband was at home with the baby and the dog and she came in the next day and she, she was just bawling her eyes out. Which we love because she said, my child wouldn't leave me alone, was literally stuck like glue. And so was the dog. <laughs> they came, I, like I spent the whole night on the couch with my child wrapped around me and my dog on my foot the whole night. And you go, that's so, so awesome. And you go, what, what, what terror, what horrible stories did we have to hold in our system that then creates a physiological response that tells everyone, don't come near me. I'm dangerous. I'm unsafe. I'm la, 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 all, all of these things. And it's a story. And when the story changes, the physiology changes, and then immediately the environment around us re reacts and responds differently. Yeah, I had something similar. It was a woman who said that, um, it's someone I've known for a while, and she was telling me that her, um, when her sister died, her mum said to her, um, it would have been so much easier if it was you. And what, what she was meaning was that her sister didn't have any family. There was no legacy there, whereas my client did. So... But she's carried that around for the, the whole time. And, and, and we could go to a mother and we could say, what did you mean? And she would be going, oh, my God, that's not what I meant. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you meant. It's what, what, what was heard. Yeah. And then what was carried from that moment on. Yeah. So she had to kind of break down. And when she told me that, I, I've always said to everybody, you don't need to tell me the details of your story. We just need you to kind of understand it yourself yeah it said it said ownership i know there's a story there and i understand it and some people have the need to share it but we don't need to have them share it but if they want to and you're yeah. comfortable and they're comfortable that's cool too yeah so she um she did share and we can have a wee chat about it and i said you've got a choice here now you can leave this on the table here or you can go and speak to your mom about it 
but the choice is yours and how you want to take it forward. Um, so I saw her one more time after that and she's been feeling great since then. I, I, I don't know what she chose to do, but for me that's irrelevant as long as... I, absolutely, because it, it, it doesn't matter. The, the, the magic happens in the recognising the significance of that piece of the story. Yeah. And, 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 and it is am amazing. And, and, and again, I want, I want to reflect back that there will be people who are doing this work that will be listening to you and going, well, I've never had that. I've never mm -hmm. had people do this. And, and guys, that's okay too. So we meet people where they're at and we meet people where we're at as well. You can't go, you can't coach someone through something if you've never considered those aspects of your own life. And it's not right and it's not wrong. And that's a very important thing. So, you know, it, it, it's like your client comes in for a reason. And, 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 um, and if you're helping them, whatever that is, they, they walk out and their pain is less um, and they feel better about life. Well, that's fantastic. You've done a great job. Don't be listening and going, oh, my God, I haven't had someone had a life-changing thing. Uh, guess what? To them, walking out without pain for them was life-changing. We so often set the standard, and I think this, this, this has been one of the challenges in my teaching, is when, when we bring people up to the table, you know, we have some crazy shit go down. And pretty much if, if there are 10 people on the table, there are probably eight miracles. And the problem is you watch that process, and then in your brain goes, every time I do this work, there must be a miracle. It's not like that. And, and, and the thing is that, and, and I, like, in fact, one of, the, <laughs> one of the craziest workshops that I ran in London, uh, like we'd already done some other workshops and there were just almost, inverted commas, too many miracles. And so I declared and I said, this workshop, there will be no miracles. There will be none of that. And who do you think was the very first person on my table for the diaphragm? Rob with his eyes. Oh, yeah. And Rob went from pretty much 80% visual loss in his right eye. By the time we just finished with the diaphragm, he was sitting up going, whoa, where did you guys come from? I can't see you clearly, but I know you're there now. You literally weren't there. And I'm like, oh, crap. And it was literally everyone who was on the table. It was... <laughs> There was even there, there. There was there was even on that course. There was um, an ex um, Celtic football club player um, who I hadn't worked with when I worked with Celtic football club, but I had trained the guys. And he and and he he started. Um, it's quite quite a little, little weird. He kind of goes, yeah. In 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 Celtic football club through the corridors we call you Jesus. Um, and then the other times we call you something else. And I'm like, okay, dude, Jesus, that's weird. Um, later, <laughs> la la later, when my thumb was delicately placed in his rib cage, he's going, they call you Satan, Satan, you're Satan. <laughs> I can understand that after you separating those two ribs of mine, that the old people will call you Satan when you stick your thumb in their ribs. <laughs> what separated? Do you remember we did the? I'm, 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 no, all, all I'm hearing is some offspring here, baby. You gotta keep it separated. That's all I heard you say. Hey, if rib, ribs are not designed to stick together, yeah. You know, if 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 I have to like bring the little little leave, you know, steel pipe to leave them open, I, I do it with great love. It wasn't the most pleasurable experience I've ever had, but it, it was effective. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you see, and I think that's what people forget. At the end of the day, we're not here to cause pain. But if, but if something shut down and it hurts, it's because it was already there. But at the end of the day, it's the outcome that drives what we do. And also, you know, you did give me permission. Fair enough. No, you have to, you have because because this is this is this is called responsibility. It's like at any point in the process, it's really important that our client can go, "Whoa, stop!" And you have to stop. It's a you know, it's a permission-based system, but that's also how we create an environment that's safe for us to go to some very very uncomfortable places 
to do some seriously cool work. Yeah. Um, just going back to what you were saying, though, about the, you know, it's not all these miracle stories. It definitely isn't, and, and, and it doesn't have to be, because what I find is, like, I had someone in last night who, he'd actually phoned me to do, because a lot of my work used to be sports massage as well, and I just, I don't even offer it now. Um, but he'd phoned about it, and I said that his shoulders tightening up, uh, does a lot of CrossFit, so he... I spoke to him about it and said, look, I don't really do massage, but what we can do is try and work out why your shoulder tightens up a lot. So he came in, we did the assessment, bilateral three, three, three arm, and we did the diaphragm and all of a sudden he's standing at six foot three again, chests open. Um, and that's, you know, we only did zone one, but he's walked out feeling amazing. Yeah. There was no emotional breakthrough, but he just said, I just feel better. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and to me, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and that's what I, I really enjoy that. I love when you even just doing the diaphragm and, and somebody stands up and all of a sudden that. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so did someone turn the lights on? What? Yeah. Hey, geez, the sounds are different. The lighting is different. But, now, it is, but, but you see, I think this, this is the thing. It's, 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 it's always that same thing. The body has two priorities. Got to breathe, got to move. And if we can find the right thing for the body, it will respond immediately. But it is yeah. also why we contract with our clients because he was there because his shoulders were tight. So the minute you found the reason his shoulders were tight and it was no longer there, tick, done. He's happy yeah. as Larry. He's going, geez, I thought we were going to, you know, we might, like I'd walk out, go, yeah, I'm a little bit better, thanks. But actually he's going, whoa, geez, this is amazing. Who cares what the story is behind that unless he comes back and he says, hey, listen, this is what I've noticed. And I was going to ask you this question. That's, it's, it's a new contract. It's a different conversation. You know, like he's walking around today going, I actually have no idea what Grant did, but I feel amazing. And, you know, you should probably go see him. Well, what does Grant do? Well, he, he pushes these points and he got my breathing and suddenly I popped up and people are looking at him like he's absolutely cooked. Yeah. And he goes... I, and I and, and people sound cooked when they when they're trying to describe it because there isn't really a language because we've been taught that we are small and weak and pathetic and it takes some medical intervention or some medicine to fix us. But actually, most of the time, our body has the ability to do it. Most of the time, we all need yeah. a bit of help, but but we've stopped believing in just how amazing the system is. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what we're doing. We're reminding people and, and like, whoa. And, and of course, there's no language for that because ma imagine your kids grew up and they knew because it's just part of what they learned at school and what they learned at home is, oh, dad, I'm feeling a bit like this. Hey, let's have a look at why you're feeling like that. I wonder if there's something that you could do to feel different because you don't seem to like it. And then they learn... It, it, that, that actually most of the time the answer is inside of them. And instead of going looking for it outside, and then suddenly there's a, there's a different game at play. Yeah. You know, it, become, it, beca it becomes a very, very interesting thing of um, how different they would be. Because you, you look at the world now, every, everyone's always seeking the answer outside of themselves. Somebody else has the answer. And, and what we're trying to say is, yes, we have an answer, but, we, but we're going to guide you back into you. And when you get there, it might be a little bit uncomfortable to start with, but that's because you dumped too much shit in there over the last 20 years. We can clear some of that shit out. It's a great space to reside in. Yeah. Uh, and I think even people come in to see me, the one thing they always, they're always they saying is, you know, so you're going to fix me. I need you to fix me. Uh, I said, that's, that's not my job. I, I might open some doors for you, but it's up to you to walk through them. Yeah. Um, and you can tell the ones that are going to buy into it and, and do the work themselves. Um, and, 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 you, and you can tell the ones who go, no, I want you to fix me. And that's when you politely say, you know what? There's a great guy down the road. He, he, he'll, he'll do his best for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I would just say to them, this is obviously, it's not for you, and that's fine, that's fine, I can accept that. Um, and I, I used to, 
be in the place where you want to fix everybody. I was that guy. And now I'm much more comfortable within me to think, do you know, I can see that you're not open enough to actually want to make any changes in your life that are going to open you up. Because it might be that they're too vulnerable to open up. And it might be that you've planted the seed in six years' time. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. You know, it, it's um, it, what, what pops up for me is a little, little animation I saw, and it's um, two characters sitting, you know, but it's, it's uh, um, what is it? Uh, change and, dis- and, and comfort. And uh, ba- basically, it, it, it's, it's almost like a Western, and it says, This town ain't big enough for the two of us because you can't have change and comfort in the same place. Yeah. And some people are comfortable in their discomfort. So they don't want to leave because it's what they know. It's their certainty. And you, you know what's ironic? There are a whole lot of people that I've just realized as we're speaking. I, I'm so glad, by the way, for anyone who's not sure, I'm standing today because I realize I've, I've spent my life teaching standing and um, I've been sitting doing all these interviews and um, it feels nice to stand. Um uh, and, and probably when I stand, then I forget what I'm saying because. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, mm, uh, mm, uh, so, yeah, so, yeah, so, so the realization is that there, there is so much uncertainty going on in the world right now. Obviously, we all know this. You know, it, yes. it, nothing is as it was, and we don't know if it ever will be. But what our need is to find a level of certainty. And if my certainty is my pain, boy, am I going to hold on tightly to that pain right now in the paradigm that the world is at? Because the thoughts of you coming along and magically waving a wand and showing me why the pain's there, good Lord, that will be another level of uncertainty that I have to deal with. Not only is the world crazy, but you're going to teach me that my pain doesn't need to be there, that I'm, I'm in control of myself and my world. And, and, and you'd be going, yeah, isn't that amazing? And they're thinking, fuck off, dude. That's about the scariest. What, what are you trying to do? To like drown me, then chop my head off and then drive a bus over me? It's like, and you go, no, but, but that's amazing. And you're going, how can that be amazing? Because the only thing right now in my whole life that is my certainty, is my pain. Everything else is crazy. Yeah. And, 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 and for someone listening to this, they're probably thinking, geez, I, I want whatever drugs Doug's on. Um, it's called fresh South African air, by the way. Um, <laughs> it's really good. Um, but, 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 but it is, it's, it, all, all of these things come into play. So you have people, you know, that, 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 that shifting between certainty, uncertainty, and there's so much uncertainty going on. So you're finding that there are a whole lot of people that the burden that they carry is far greater than before. And they actually need to acknowledge it. And as you're finding, you're saying big, big Scottish guys coming in and actually finding a space to go, <sighs> this is what I'm carrying. And, and you know, and, and I think I, like I've said this a few times in emails and, 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 and in interviews. What, what, what worries me in the world at the moment is people are still telling you that they're okay. <laughs> you know, guys, yes. you don't have to be okay. You're allowed to have a shitty day, a shitty week. You know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's like, but no, no, I'm okay, really. You know, I, I'm like, I, Matt and I just went to the, the gym because he had to do some swimming, um, some timing for his water polo. Um, and, and, and four of his other teammates were there. And I've been feeling like a, this last week, I, I just felt like my brain just went, you know, I'm done for a while. I'm just taking a break because there's so much noise out there and there's so much going on. So I went, okay. You know, so like if, if after supper, Amy would say, so are you working tonight? I go, no, let's watch Netflix. She's like, what? Again? <laughs> Dude, uh, who are you? You know, um, but it's like I said, look, my, bra- my brain's just actually hit the point where it's it, it just lost interest right now because there's just so much chaos going on out there. You know, if, if pe- people people at least have stopped saying to me, so when are you traveling again? Well, I really don't know because neither do you. 
You know, you people who invited me to places saying, don't worry, our country's open. Well, those countries are closed now. And, 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 and all of this plays out in our system. And so if we can create spaces, spaces of certainty, like a space is, you know, at 10 o'clock, you and I will meet, we will do a 45-minute session, boop, that's a piece of certainty. It's scheduled, it's in there. And then you pitch up, you are present, you are engaged. Suddenly it invites them to do the same and figure out what it is they're carrying, what it is that's so scary about what's going on. And then to, to maybe do something different with it. The, the one I used to, I still find is that when you start the conversation about asking them what's going on in their life and, and they don't want the, you know, I'm not, nothing, I'm not talking about that, I'm not going to mention anything. And that used to put me on the back foot thinking, oh, how, how am I going to get the story here? So now what I've what realised is you can actually just look at the way somebody's talks, the body language, how they sound, and it gives you a wee insight. And then slowly, as you start to go through the sequence, you might open something up that they then start to talk. Yeah. So I found that like, I don't need to get everything right up front from them as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, and, and I think that's such a big thing. And it's, um, you know, it, it, it's, there, there does seem to be um, a, a need for us to like almost have a program where, where we just, talking about how to communicate and, and, and almost stop trying to get an answer. Ask yeah. a question, see what comes up. It, everything is information. It's kind of like you're doing, you're doing something. Uh, let, let, let's say we're going diaphragm, so is glute. And, uh, you know, obviously if we, for the diaphragm, we're going to see um, hamstring flexibility. And so you switch on the diaphragm and the flexibility gets better. And you go, awesome. Then you get them breathing and it gets even better. Uh, then you and then you shift on to the psoas and you do the psoas and the psoas gets much stronger and the hamstring gets less. And you go, well, what have I done wrong? Well, nothing because the, it's information. That's, it's just saying when you did this, this got less. The body is communicating and there are many reasons why. But if you go, oh, that's wrong, I need to stop and go back and try and figure out what I did wrong, you will for, kind of miss the point that you needed to get to the glute to, 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 to make, let's say, the psoas feel safe in its partnership. And then the hamstring says, cool, now I'll give you another 20 degrees. Yeah. But if you stop and go, like, you know, I ask you, so what's going on in your world? <laughs> Grant, uh, stay focused on my injury. It's, it's my ankle, dude. Um, and, and, and you're like, no, I, I need to know how how is your world how is your life tell me you know and, and they're like dude you cook shut the, shut the hell up big and what you're doing is you're not you're not meeting them where they're at yeah but as you say when you meet them then you can start to move and as as appropriate they may suddenly go oh you know that's interesting wow that my ankle feels kind of different did you know that that i hurt my ankle when i was arguing with my boss I didn't know that, but thanks, thanks. That's, uh, do you know, what does that mean to you? And you'll probably find they unravel the whole damn story and they sit there going, oh. actually, every time my ankles got sore, it's been when I was in conflict. I was not, not physical. I was, when I was arguing with someone, when I was, well, that's quite interesting, you know, um, and they start to see a pattern. So yeah. now we can start the coaching. So the next time you're in a conflict, oh no, I'm not going to do conflict. No, no. With the next time you're in a conflict, because <laughs> conflict will find you. How are we going to do it differently so we don't end up in the same place? You know, so we go from kind of facilitating a process and understanding what's going on. And when we understand it, then the coaching goes into, so how can we help them take it into their world so they don't have to keep repeating the stupid pattern? I mean, the pattern, sorry, the pattern, not the stupid pattern. Although when, usually when we take a look and see it, it looks pretty damn stupid. That, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's just me talking about my stuff. <laughs> but I think it's important for like us to realize that we, we don't have to have all the answers straight away either. Um, and, and we don't even have to have all the answers at the end either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that, again, it relates to what we were talking about before about 
being on the course and people watching you and what you achieve on the table and and I, I, for me I was quite lucky. I mean I've only been doing it for a year and a half now but the one th thing that was in Edinburgh that you'd said was don't wait till you're really good at it don't wait till you're an expert just go and do it and I did I'm my first client and the mistake I made with my first client was I tried to be like you. Do you know what I mean? Because you're watching you achieve all these major, brilliant things. And you all right. Well, well, well let's, let, 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 let's see how good you are at it. Please speak like me. Well, it's South African. But it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somehow I knew that was coming. <laughs> But yeah, but I think we, we think we can, everybody watch it, it's what you do, we try to be like you, but I didn't achieve and I quickly realized that people buy people. So if I'm not me, then people aren't gonna to respond to me. And it only took me one client to realize that. So I'm quite lucky, I suppose, that I, I realized- oh, I thought you were gonna say you're quite clever. <laughs> <laughs> that. that's, that's, that's just well, obvious i don't have to state that yeah 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 but um i see it quite a lot in the, the community you know people talking about but when i'm doing this i'm not getting what i've seen doug achieving in the, in the workshops and it kind of goes back to realizing that not everything's a big profound story but also we need to be as genuine as we can be as being ourselves because people aren't going to buy into us if we're not being true and being being ourselves. Because they'll see through us, whether they realise it or not. So see yeah. through and, and, and I, th I think the, the, the irony and the sad part is none of that is in classic training of anything, whether it be sports therapy or physiotherapy or osteopathy or chiropractic or medicine. There, there's nothing, nothing is um, teach says be a good human being and let them find that part of you and let that be the, the the driving force that inspires you know I, I, we we did a whole thing on transference do not have transference basically whole section wrote an exam on it um on how not to let the client or the patient know anything about you it's about them it's only about them if they have feelings and emotions don't let them touch you and it, 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 it's, it's all of those things were, were set up with the right intent, I suppose, because, you know, when, when I started teaching, um, I, I can remember one particular workshop that I ran in Cape Town and it was at the University of Cape Town. It was at the sports injuries clinic um, at Helene's place. And we, I don't know, we had about 25 people squeezed into the, into the space. And I just looked at my group and so many of them at the start just looked tired. They, you know, a lot of them had been in practice 10, 15, 20, 25, some 30 years. And I just, I just asked a question. I said, who's tired, bored, and frustrated with what they're doing? And probably two thirds of the hands came up. Yeah. And I was like, but you guys are, you have good practices. Yes, we're doing everything that we've learned. We've done all these other courses. We've got better and better. But somehow it's a, the, the good word is it's a schlep. A schlep is like, it, it's a burden. It's a, it's pulling this heavy rock with you every day. It's like, and, 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 and someone's like, do you have to have this heavy burden that you carry? Oh, well, you know, the clients keep coming. It, it's so tough hearing people's crap. Um, I, 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 um, when I was doing posts, I'm going to, um, one of the, one of the media posts that's going to go out is a t-shirt that we bought for Nuno. Um, so he wears it sometimes when he's in his practice and it's Afrikaans and it's, it says, Ek is jammer van your kak to her, which basically means I'm sorry to hear about your shit. <laughs> 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 and, but in Portugal, they just go, Oh, nice t-shirt. Cause people, yeah, people don't ask what it means, but, but it's like, if you aren't armed with anything that can help people deal with some of their shit well then it's a burden then it's just a oh, you know you don't have to tell me this because i can't do anything with it but but if you're telling me what your shit is we can probably translate that into what your body's doing and figure out a better way and a better strategy in your body so that the shit doesn't seem so shitty 
And all we did was make the body feel better and change its perspective and allow it to see a different way of doing things. You know, and like to you and me, this seems like the most obvious conversation in the world, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, it, it's like, but, but maybe if, it was, if this conversation was two years ago, you'd be going, dude, you are, you know, you should stay in Cape Town. You've, you've, you've been hit on the head too many times with your surfboard. Yeah, you've been doing too much belly breathing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a technique called smoke a joint. It's in the manual. It's in the manual. We do, we do stress you don't need anything in your hand at the time. <laughs> unless, un unless it's good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, the, the, the thing is that, so I would watch all these people who, who had done exactly what they'd been told to do. And technically they were successful. And yet they were tired, exhausted, burnt out, frustrated, bored. And, 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 and I think that's what I see around the world. You know, we can package it and make it all shiny, whistly, hoo, 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 and, oh, and, and it also does this, and you can press this button. But the question is, does it work, yes or no? And, 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 uh, and I think that, you know, I, I'm seeing it more and more. It, it, it's like we were talking the other day about, um, you know, should we, should we do a campaign about breathing, somebody said. And I said, no, you would, but don't. Breathing is pivotal to be activated. I said, yes, but there are 100 million other people right now telling people how important breathing is mm. and they must belly breathe. And there are 100 million people, let's say, hearing this message, breathing into their chests and their shoulders saying, I'm breathing. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think the, my favorite person is Vim because Vim just goes, breathe, motherfucker. And that's better than someone trying to tell you what to do because the telling you what to do without activating the neural network is quite arbitrary in my mind. And it's, and, and, and people are telling you the right stuff. It's, it's, it's what we want, but the methodology is not right. Otherwise everyone would start breathing and the world would be a different place, but the world is still a weird, really weird, crazy place. So people obviously aren't doing good breathing. Yeah, but that was me. I was bored. I was really bored at work, but enjoying seeing people. But yeah, absolutely. And this has totally changed. You were just having see, work was just a social catch up for you. Hey, how are you doing? You know, I'm not going to help you today, but let's have a nice conversation along the way. Yeah, I want to help people. Me, I want to get rid of them too. And and one of the, 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 the my favorite stories from doing the activated was treating a woman for a a hip pain. She came back in for a whole session. I said, how have you been? And she said, I've had a couple of niggles this week, but I just lay down and I did my activations and it went. And I said, isn't that a great place to be? Because now you don't need me. You can just look at it. You know where I am if you need me. Uh -huh. You can just go and look at it yourself. And she kind of thought, oh, that's true, yeah. So she's totally in control. And I've not heard from her in a year. Yeah. <laughs> so, and and yeah. shame. And I'm so sorry because your practice is empty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, the, but, but the thing is, actually, if you tracked and you saw how many people have come to you because of her, because you empowered her, one, to, to understand her problem, two, walked with her to overcome it, then handed her the tools to maintain it. Yeah. What you actually did is you empowered her to talk about you. The, and the one thing people always say to you is, but aren't you doing yourself out of business? Because if you're teaching people how to maintain it themselves and they don't need you, you're not doing yourself out of business. I'm saying, well, how many people have you sent to me? And they're like, oh, about four or five. Yeah, well, if they do the same, they go away and they can look after themselves, but they send me four or five people each. Then all of a sudden, that, four, that one person became four or five, became 20, Became, you know, and it, Absolutely. And, and, and so the, the one where I'm going to fix you and hold on to you is a yeah. collapse imploded state, which is what we talk about. Implosion is when you collapse it on yourself and destroy yourself. So you're holding on tight. And obviously that must be exhausting and frustrating and all of that. Or you can give, you can share, you can open up. 
And then it's just this abundance comes. So it's an expanded state. It's our one, two, three state. So, so and, 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 you know, it's, it's last night um, I, I was watching um, an hour and a half program, um, all, all learning stuff. And, and it, it, it was so much about, you know, like how some, somebody wanting to sell something. If, if you go, oh, I've got another product. How do I sell it? Versus how do you add value, give value? You know, because the thing is that what I've realized in my life is people will give me money. <laughs> they will. They, they will give me money. And, and then people might be going, Doug, that's no, they will. As long as I add value. And so yeah. whether I was a waiter and the value that I added was great service, I entertained you, I engaged with you. And when you left, you had an awesome experience. You tipped me well. And so I was a good waiter. I made a lot of money waitering. But what it is, it's about an experience. And so if we are adding value to people's lives, they are better for seeing us. You don't have a threat to your business. But if you think you've got to hold on, don't let anyone know my secret sauce. <laughs> and, 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 and we know, we know we definitely, and, and I just want to state this because um, somebody watching, we have lots of people. I've been training for over 16 years. We have lots of people and we actually know who all of them are. We could shut them down in an instant, but we won't because we don't care. Who run off and then go and, create their own little worlds where they tell people that they're almost like, I'm the magician. I'm this, I'm that. I'm not the magician. Me, Doug, I'm not the magician. I know magic. Can I teach you? You know, but, 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 but because they enjoy the, ha ha, look how clever I am. And everyone's going, wow, you're amazing. Yeah. And, 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 and I can't even sit in judgment of that because that's just, it's a place of scarcity and they feel that. But, but, but it's, it, it, it's like, it, how do we go the other way? How do we say, I have an answer. Can I share it with you? Bec yeah. be, be, and, 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 and people, yeah, it, 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 it is the, the, the big thing about this. It's like um, add value and people will come. If you're not adding value, you get found out really quickly. Yeah, uh, when you learn this and you start to see the results and how much better they are, you almost think, aha, I've got a little advantage over all the other people. Yeah. Uh, so if I keep this to myself, then, do you know, I'm going to look great. And I can oh, yeah, your ego is like, ta -ta 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 -ta. Yeah. and I'll make money and I have it. So, but I think that's where I've got to... Um, I had a probably had like six months where yeah, I was kind of like that and I was thinking, oh, good, I've got an advantage. But then you start to realize. You're a bad person, Grant. Yeah. And yeah. For six months, anyway, you were a bad person. Yeah. I was just insecure about it. That's all. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but it's completely, I just want to say, it's so completely normal and natural that because, because our, our egos want us to be special. Yeah. But what I've realized is that the people you treat are always going to go and tell someone else anyway. But there's enough people out there that are in need of injury. They've got injury. There are so many broken people. There's, in, 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 in fact, I, I think we'd almost nowadays have to go, um, can anyone find me someone who's not broken, who doesn't need help, who doesn't need guidance, who doesn't, because I can't. That's why I always say we're all fucked. You know? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but I, I, my business is in a town called Hamilton, and there's about 65,000 people in Hamilton. And if I treated all of them once, I wouldn't be able to get through that 60,000. So it's kind you, of. You'd, you'd need to have many lives for that. Yeah. So it's realizing that it doesn't matter if I keep this to myself or if I tell everybody, there's people are going to go and see other people anyway. So why don't we get as many people knowing this as possible so that it benefits more people because the people that you could never see anyway. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and also, wouldn't it be nice if you're walking through your town and people are actually happier? Like the postures are up so they can actually look at you. They're, they're not all these miserable sods walking around on the streets and in their cars and, and, and mm -hmm. making, <clears throat> making decisions on our behalf. And, uh, I, I, 
stop people looking like in Hamilton, it's like the town of the the walking dead at times. Everybody's like this and just look miserable, especially now. Everybody it's so, so funny. I'm, I'm I'm sure someone in New Zealand is thinking, what do you have a Hamilton too? <laughs> 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 because yeah, you know there, there, there are many reasons, and um, but 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 yeah, it's it, it's and I think this is this is always the amazing thing traveling the world is just seeing the different ways that people display how they disconnect and how they shut down their physiology and you know it's it's. Uh, uh, the the story the story that pops into my head was one that that I was told um, when I was working um, uh, when I was studying and uh, I was studying um, and the hospital I was working at the time was called Somerset Hospital and it was in the burns unit and I was there for three months and um, this there were a couple of stories that I was told um, the, 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 I'll tell you the one but I, but there's a guy that inspired the crap out of me and even part of what I'm doing today is because of him. Um, but there was a guy who had a motorbike accident that got burnt and was more than 60% of his body was burnt. And they, you know, they had him on all this medicine and, and, and all the stuff. And, and when he gained consciousness, they, he, he basically woke up screaming because, you know, anyone who's ever worked in a burns unit knows there's, there's a scream that comes from when they're cleaning the wounds and it's just disgusting. And the guy said, listen, we're going to give you morphine. And we're gonna, you won't, and he goes, listen here, if it hurts this much, I must be alive. And he went, you guys keep walking in and telling me I should be dead. So let me know I'm alive through this pain. So this was like an urban legend in, in the Somerset <laughs> Hospital. Me, the guy who inspired me, and I've had lots of patients along the way, and this is like in hospitals and people who really have struggled. This guy was about 16 years old. Ugh, I'm going to get quite tearful, actually, because he, he grew up in a gang and he made a decision in his life that he wanted to leave the gang, except the gang decided that was not going to happen. And they put a tie around him and threw petrol on him and then set him alight. And this was a guy that had more than 60% burns, more than 70% burns, that he basically should have been dead. But here was the thing. His arm, right, left, right, right arm, was now stuck, unable, like here, because the physios that had worked before was didn't want to hurt him. Didn't want to hurt him. And on one side, I understand that. Mm. But if his arm stayed there, in the next month or so, he'll never ever lift his arm up again in his whole life. Yeah. And so I went into my sessions with him and I, I said, listen, I'm learning this stuff, but this is what I know, what I've been taught is you'll get what's called a contracture and you will never be able to lift your arm higher than where it is right now. And he goes, no, but I need my arm up there. I said, no, I know that. And, and, and this is probably my first time I ever contracted with someone. I'm just thinking I, I was probably a third year student. And I, and I said to him, I'm, I'm here every day for three months and I'll work with you. But shall we see if we can get your arm all the way up? And he's, yes. And I said, it's, it, it's going to be worse than when they clean your wounds. You're going to scream. You're going to, but you and I, if we do this together, if we talk to each other and you let me know when it's too much, because there's going to be pain. And he said, please, will you do this? So every day I was there. And, and we very quickly got his arm up there. And you could go, wow, that's amazing. No, it wasn't fucking amazing. It was disgusting. It was like I, I sometimes would be driving in in the morning and, and really be going, I just want to turn around and go somewhere else because this, because it, 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 it's, it's heart-wrenching. But, geez, Grant, this guy's courage. The, so, so he understood the game. 
I, with, within my limited knowledge, I explained it to him with what I'd been taught about contractures. No, but I don't want that reality. And so he's, I even remember, you see, this is, this, is, this is how teaching works. Oh, I love it. So the person who taught me about contractures was a partially sighted physio, amazing man called Mr. Rod Seth. And he was one of our lecturers, Ama amazing, amazing man. But he told a story when I was on learning the first part of, of Burns about a young kid who um, also burnt legs and got locked into contractures, but this kid couldn't speak. And yeah, in fact, Mr. Rod, Rod Seth inspired me to have the conversation with this guy that then drives a lot of what I do today and why pain is just pain. But he said, because nobody wants to hurt this kid, shame they're vulnerable, shame they're this. This kid's legs got locked in contractures. So they had to do surgery with them and rip all these, all this tissue, all this. I, I, yeah, I'm glad you're pulling faces. I um, want this nice and graphic. But this, this is what drove me. God, that's weird. I'd forgotten all about this. But he said, for him, what his driver was, was this kid. Because this kid was conscious, was silently screaming. Because it's silently screaming. And the reason the kid was silently screaming wasn't because of the scar tissue. It was because somebody didn't do the work that needed to be done with the kid. So the scar tissue... Oh, sorry, I'm going into places. I haven't thought about this for friggin' eons. And so that story inspired me to have the conversation with my client, my patient, my, and we agreed to do the work. It's not easy. It's it, 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 absolutely. It's, uh, and it's exactly the same with our clients now. We can't force anyone to do anything. You, you, you lay down the game. You lay down what you know. And maybe tomorrow you'll know more. But when I said it to this guy, I said, this is what I've learned. I'm still a student. I'm still learning. But this is, you said you want this. This is what it'll take. And it was disgusting. But, but we did that. Yeah. And yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's like, crap, this is like, hmm, 19, 1994. 1994 would have been Somerset Hospital by the waterfront in Cape Town. Yeah. And, 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 and the, the sounds of those screams, it's nothing, there's nothing like it when they change, putting betadine on the, on, on the, on the wounds. Um, but, but, it, but it teaches you to either switch off and disconnect from it so you don't hear it or switch on and engage with it and see what's really going on behind it. But I think that's what makes, well, it's what makes you you, but it's what makes people uh, a much more effective therapist if you're willing to, to do the things that make you feel uncomfortable. Um, to benefit your client you've always got to look after yourself yeah but hearing you, you like you said some people will want to open up to you and tell you something that you might not really want to hear yeah but if you've got that energy to cope with it and deal with it yourself and it benefits them then you will be much more effective at what you're doing yeah so i think that is a very powerful beginning and 